Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today it is time for a gar garden tour. And to answer the question, is my Zone 9B garden that's currently growing, mostly under shade cloth, actually growing? Let's answer the question. Okay guys, so first I would like to say a big welcome to all of our new subscribers and also big thank you to everybody that has been commenting on my videos about the progress of their gardens and some of the practices that I've been doing. Sometimes it's hard standing out on that bridge alone saying things like don't use pesticides, you can grow all year long, it's okay that it's 110 degrees, things are going to be fine don't kill the bugs sometimes it's really hard saying that but for all of you guys that say yeah I do it too it lets people know that it's possible and that you're not alone and it makes me feel not alone so I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that is commenting and just saying their experiences too so I grow a garden in zone 9b in Phoenix Arizona in the city and also in the desert so all of it and I currently have a garden with shade cloth on it there's shade cloth everywhere you'll see some blowing right this way and not everything is shade cloth which we'll go over but most of the things are so I want to show you guys my garden under shade so here it is guys here's the garden as you can see there's a lot of shade cloth on it and so now the question is is it really growing and is this effective way to grow a garden let's peel back the shade cloth and see so first up, since it's easier to get into, let's look at my medicinal, or this is my culinary herb bed. Now I have a lot of things growing in here. I have some sweet marjoram, I have some garlic chives, there is some parsley there and there, this one's going to flower. There's some sage, some thyme, and some more thyme over here. And then there's an oregano that's trying its best to come back, but we'll see. Now. This thing is growing amazingly, if I have to say myself. Now guys, I have strictly gone to creating all of my own seasonings and growing my own herbs that I use to create those seasonings. And this bed, this little bed right here that's not that big has created more seasoning blends and flavor for our food than I could even like show you guys it it produces so much and I have learned that if I cover it in like the early summertime I can allow those different things like that sweet marjoram to be able to not be burnt all the way down by the Sun so that then it can continue to grow so things like my sweet marjoram have been in there for now two solid years so up next, let's look in this area. Now I wanna point out that this area is not completely covered. Like this row tunnel is not completely pulled down as a tunnel to where nothing can get in it. Because I'm not using it for the sense of protecting what's in here, like from pest. I'm using it to help the onions hopefully try to get a little bit more of a bulb on them and it is because I planted my onions way too late and so they're not this one actually which is one that is a little bit earlier that I planted it but like these ones right here I planted them too late guys so I'm trying to get as much of out of them that I can but what really is going to this bed is the cantaloupe so there's one right there and then there's one right over there there's also some beans back there too so once I get all of the onions out, I want to make sure that the cantaloupe one gets as much sun as possible, but then also it's able to get seen by the bees, which is why I don't cover the entire thing. Now my rosemary could use a little bit of afternoon shade, so it's enjoying its time right here. But if you guys don't know, rosemary is used as landscape here in the desert in a lot of different places. So it can withstand a lot of sun. My potato, on the other hand, <laughs> this one needs to come out. It is by itself now. Um, there was just one random potato that I just planted back that looked like it was still going. And yeah, I need to dig it up and see. I want to put sweet potatoes in these pots because sweet potatoes can take a lot of the heat. Now guys, part of growing a desert garden is going to be to grow what grows well at the time that 
you can grow it <laughs> so you guys won't see things that you might see on other YouTube channels in my garden like your brassicas your um, broccoli your cauliflowers your cabbages different things like that it is just way too hot if you guys want to see me grow that make sure you come back in the fall and I will be growing it in the fall and in the winter because yes during the winter is when we grow things like that now guys underneath here you'll see my Kentucky wonders on this side and they're starting to grow up which we need to just make sure that they're doing that and then we have the Kentucky wonders on this side that aren't covered that are way bigger now the difference is is that these Kentucky wonders were planted in the winter and they went through some stuff over the winter I allowed them to overwinter by covering them up and then they've just been continuing to grow they are already producing too and these ones I started in the spring they're going through some stuff with the uh, with the summer and getting started now the difference is is that if you can get them started early enough then they'll be like this and can withstand a lot more of the heat versus if they are younger you're just gonna take a little bit more tender love and care to get them to start producing and do well part of that tender love and care is that I'm covering them up at the bases so that then at least the bottom part where their roots are can stay a little bit cooler now let's see what's under this side now guys if you were to come to my garden at this time of the day which it's not completely like in the it's probably in the 80s right now right about now you'll see my garden with some of the things like this where the shade cloth is pushed back and it's because there's certain things that I want to have more Sun um, and but during the later part, I do want to cover them up because when it's 100 and something degrees, it's a little too hot for them. So let me show you what I got going on here because there's a lot that is fruiting. So first off, look at my Roma tomato, guys. Do you guys remember this tomato from the winter? It has been producing since, I would say, probably about December, November maybe? but we have some new little Roma tomatoes on here. They are a lot lighter because they're under shade cloth, so they look like little eggplants. But nope, those are Roma tomatoes. Um, it just keeps going. I cut off all of the dead parts that from that got like cold damage, and now it's just doing its own thing again. Now these squash are part of those things that I want to get more sun. They will grow a lot better, a lot faster, if I allow them to get more of that morning sun directly without being under shade cloth. I should have planted these earlier but you know you win some you lose some now over here we have our beautiful serrano pepper please excuse the motorcycle you would think they wouldn't be motorcycles in the summer in the desert but there are okay guys that was an entire motorcycle gang <laughs> but look at all of my beautiful serranos guys now this plant i didn't think was going to do well and i planted it here fully thinking that it was going to die and it has completely taken over and just grown so many Sorantos. So many on here. And it's pretty tall too. Now back here too, I also have my mint that is not liking the weather at all. But don't worry. Just let your mint die back. It'll grow back during the fall. I have some thyme that I need to come in and harvest. I have some chocolate mint. Look at how that grew, guys. The chocolate mint, on the other hand, is loving this weather. I do want to come in and harvest this and also the oregano. Now below here, we have another Roma tomato. This one has a lot of little spiders in it. You guys see that spider? So uh, I don't know, it's not producing anymore right now, but I think I'm just gonna leave it just because it is the spider's habitat and it is protecting. It's, well, the spiders are living there, but the spiders are eating insects that are on everything else that might get on everything else. So I'm gonna leave them there. Then we have my absolute favorite, which are the shishito peppers. Look at all of these beautiful shishito peppers, guys. If you guys are not growing these, you really need to be because they are a heavy producer. I have two plants and they grow enough for both me and my husband. We have Miss Eggie back here, who is almost five years old, guys. She's going to be turning five. She has some more eggplant on her. It's so great. Love her to death. And then we have our poblano pepper which is looking like it's producing maybe a little bit few more um, this one's really really spicy but it is a really good poblano pepper and it's produced a lot over here now moving out to the ground part of the garden we have our another serrano pepper which is producing a lot of serranos 
we have our black cherry tomato guys once again not 100 percent sold on me <laughs> growing black cherry tomatoes right now i feel like it's going to bring in a lot of pests but we're just going to let it happen and then we have our green beans now these ones let's get down here they are heavy heavy producers guys look at green beans forever in here now i thought that this was a pole bean turns out it was not it is a bush bean so i wish i had a planted more of these so guys, I have been trying to decide what plants I like for my garden that I'm just going to be sticking with soon. I'm hoping within the next like year or two, we'll be able to start looking at and purchasing land. And I want to be able to have a definite, this is what I grow in a desert when we purchase land. I don't want it to be guessing anymore. So I'm using that time to plant different types of things to see what I like best. I now know that Kentucky Wonders may not be the best thing that I can plant. I've tried them in different parts of the season. Sometimes during the fall I can get them, but that's not really a guarantee. My rattlesnake pole beans do amazing, but only during the monsoon season when I plant them, plant them there. These ones, which are, I think, called pioneer beans. I've called them so many different things. I need to get the actual name, <laughs> but I think they're called pioneer beans. They did amazing when planting them in the spring. They're starting to get a little sun scald like right now, so meaning they're getting a sunburn, but they're doing amazing and producing a lot, and I wish I had more of them. So I'm gonna try these in the fall and see how I like them and see if they're just a spring green bean or maybe if I can do them fall and spring. Now moving on along, guys, we have more onions because you guys know I was committed to that goal. And look at this, our big beefsteak tomatoes. We have this one that I am just waiting for it to continue to grow and turn red. We have another one back there. We have a big cat-faced one up here. And I think there's some growing on the other side of the fence too, but that's probably gonna end up being bird food since it's gonna be hard to get back there. I do need to go ahead and start trimming it up and maybe getting it cleaned up. This is not the time I would prefer to grow these, but this is the time they started fruiting. So you can only do what you can do, guys. You just gotta get through it. And then we have my favorite, which is my Armenian cucumber. And look at how tall this has gotten, guys, just in one week. Now this one is grown a lot quicker than this one because this one gets more sun. So guys, if you are struggling with your Armenian cucumber, I would like to encourage you that don't worry. You have all summer long to grow this Armenian cucumber. It just really needs the heat and it really needs that direct sun and it really needs just those 100 plus degrees. So once you get there, it is going to grow. Once it gets above that fence line to where it's really in the sun, you guys are gonna see this thing explode, explode. It's just getting it above that fence line and and that's the hard part. So for those of you guys that are in like the uh, East Coast or like colder climates, make sure if you're trying to grow Armenian cucumber that you are planting it in the sunniest spot. Pick the hottest part of your garden, the part that doesn't get any shade, the part that you would think I could never grow anything there and plant your Armenian cucumber there. It'll love it, it'll thank you for it. Now guys, back behind there, we have some more onions. We have this beautiful dill plant. Look at how pretty that is. I so wanted butterflies, but I didn't get them. But you know, that's fine. We, we, we win some, we lose some. But we do have lots of dill. We've been making fish with this and it's pretty good. And then we have some lemongrass, which is doing absolutely amazing. This is making some really great chicken stock and some teas. All right, guys, here is a great Ashkenazi kosher re recipe for you. I know that most um, our also parties do not mix like milk products and fish, but we mix our milk products, well, some milk products and fish, mainly just butter. So if you take your salmon with the skin on and you sear it on all the sides, put a little olive oil in the pan, sear it on all the sides with some salt and pepper, it is delicioso. <laughs> and then you take some butter and put a little bit of butter in there, let it melt, and then put some dill in there, some fresh dill, and let that cook with the butter. And then just spoon the butter over the salmon while it is continuing to cook. It's the most delicious thing in the world. If you wanted to make it to where it's kosher for everybody, then just use like a butter alternative. 
Now back here we have the makings of my favorite vegetables, guys. <laughs> this is the uh, heavy hitter okra. We have one here, one here, and then this little baby one, which will be my last one to take out, which is a little baby one. So yeah, those are right there. We have a nice little parsley here. I am almost done filling my, my dried parsley container, so this is going to help me get there. My spearmint is it is gone for the summer i'm just going to trim it up and then continue to water it because it'll come back in the fall but my mojito mint look at that guys it is love and life i think it's so funny how there's such a difference in mints i grow a lot of different mints in my garden i have spearmint peppermint mojito mint um, lemon balm chocolate mint and i think there's one other but there's a lot of different ones in here. And it's amazing to me how some of them do really good in the summer, some of them do really good in the winter, and, but I always have mint. That's the best part. But the other best part, guys, about growing a summer garden are my arches are starting to fill up. So guys, this is from where I'm sitting, and look at that. This is my pumpkin plant right here. It is a sugar pie pumpkin, and it is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. There are some onions down below it that you really can't see because they're covered in little spiky pumpkin leaves, but this thing is starting to flower, and we are starting to get the makings, I don't know if you could see that, but little pumpkin fruits. Now this is an area I want to clean out. I do want to grow some Egyptian spinach over here, but I do need to get all of these, all of this dried. I want to see if there's seeds in that. I tried to grow seed or let it go to flower and then go to seed, but I don't know. So we're going to have to open those up and see if there's some seeds in there. We have another Roma tomato down here that is doing really, really well. It has a lot of flowers coming up on it. So hopefully we'll be getting some more tomatoes. We have our raspberry here amongst this this little carrot patch <laughs> so that one's doing well and then we have another big steep big beefsteak tomato over here on my patio arch now guys I know I have a lot of tomatoes in my garden right now and that's because my black cherry tomato didn't do well so I planted um, originally in the fall so I planted a whole bunch of Roma tomatoes and then the big beefsteak tomatoes I planted for my mom I am not a fan of growing tomatoes during this time. As you can see, my big beef steak had a bunch of light on, on it, and the hotter it gets, the hotter or the harder it's going to be to have your tomatoes not explode in the heat and then also not get attacked by everything in the desert looking for water. I prefer to grow my tomatoes during the uh, winter, which is when you guys saw me have a lot of Roma tomatoes that I was picking. We pick them constantly. Right now I'm just leaving them and kind of seeing as an experiment on how long I can take them, but there aren't some they're, they're, they are not something that I plan on keeping in my garden for the entire summer. That's just something that is my personal opinion when it comes to growing tomatoes in the desert. So I think all of this has finally gone to seed and we have also let most of the nasturtium, we have some nasturtium back here that we're going to use for um, some skin toner, but most of this nasturtium I let dry completely up. I just let the sun get it. And here's why I did that. So guys, you will sometimes see things in my garden that are completely burnt to a crisp or dried to a crisp. And you're probably thinking, why is she leaving that in there? Like if you've been watching my channel for a while, the sweet peas were right there and I let them completely, completely and utterly dry out. And there were for two reasons. One, I wanted to collect seeds, which I got a little bowl full of sweet pea seeds that I'm excited to grow next year. And the second reason is for this. So all of these dead leaves here, guys, this is all living mulch. Well, dead mulch at this point, but it's all mulch. And it was free because I grew it. So instead of me just throwing those plants away, I let them dry up completely. And then that is what I use to cover my, my um, beds. So guys, I originally used wood chip mulch and I am an advocate for wood chip mulch here in the desert because it holds that water and it makes your, your beds and your pots dry out way less, but it can be expensive and it can be hard to find. The other thing that you can do is just let your plants completely get dried to a crisp by our Arizona sun, especially those big vining things that have those big um, vines that when they dry, it's like a hardened, it's almost like a piece of wood. And then you just chop those up and throw it about your beds and your pots and there goes your mulch. 
it's nice part is about that is that it does decompose a lot quicker than your wood chips so it's something that you can constantly be putting and adding to your pots but the best part is that the worms are what's eating those um, those dried leaves so then they're eating the leaves they're pooping out worm compost which is then going to your plants to grow you amazing fruits and vegetables now the other thing I am growing up this arch is going to be this cucumber now, I'm not sure how this cucumber is going to fare it did come up pretty late and it's kind of doing its own thing which we'll let it but i'm i put it right here i'm going to be able to put some shade over the uh, summer and yeah we'll see how it does now i am still waiting on this brussels sprout guys as you guys can see the aphids are starting to die back they're not actually moving anymore and that is because these are starting to go to seed. So you can start to see, and I'm gonna to touch it because it's gross, but you can start to see all of the little seeds coming up in here. Now something's gonna come in and clean up all of these aphids and eat it, and then it's just gonna be left with those dry pods like it was for my sweet pea plants where I can collect seeds. We are literally gonna blow past this spot because it has gotten destroyed, but we do have some things still alive. We have some carrots right there. We have a uh, Urkinacea that's struggling a little bit, but it's still there. All of these things have died back. We're just gonna cut them back, including these flowers and all that, and just let it all go for the summer. I'm not gonna plant anything else in these Dollar Tree pots. I'm gonna save these for monsoon planting. So I will be planting green beans again during the monsoon, and this time actually, you know, protect them <laughs> and plant them at the good time. We have some stevia that needs to be harvested, all this blew over during the storm, and then we have some more carrots. And this tomato is getting ready to get a big chop, and we have some onions down there. So guys, like I said, I'm not fond of growing tomatoes. It sounded so crispy. I'm not fond of growing tomatoes during this time of year. That's my time of year for tomatoes are going to be in the fall and the winter, but I do want to grow more melons and I need more space to grow more melons because I want to get my melons put in the freezer. So how I preserve my melons is I just cut them all up, chop them up in little bite-sized pieces, and then I put them in the freezer and then we defrost them in drinks or make smoothies, different things like that. But I want to try and grow my own and try to grow as many as I can, especially when it comes to cantaloupe because we use a lot of cantaloupe and just the way that things are going in the stores, I would prefer to grow my own. Look at here, guys. This is a better shot of it. Oh, I just love when my arches get covered. I cannot wait to where this one's completely covered and this one is covered too. And then we have this one covered. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. But what also is really pretty is this mulberry tree. And look at how big it has gotten. It has gotten pretty, pretty tall, guys. It is almost up to the top part. This is my second floor up there. So it's almost up to that little, little decoration there for the window. Really pretty. Also over here, we have our lime. This one is the dwarf Mexican lime and look at how it has grown back. It is getting really green and pretty, which is good because it's going to have to survive this hot summer. And then we also still have our little, where is it at? Our little cocoon. You guys see it? right back there that's gonna be a big beautiful moth you know how they say a watch pot never boils same principle for a uh, anything in a cocoon it doesn't turn while you're staring at it <laughs> now i'm gonna try and shoot this over the top because i don't want to take down this shade cloth but we have our big beautiful banana which probably could use a little bit more shade it's getting a little crispy but maybe i probably need like higher um stakes to be able to bring up the shade cloth but over here we have our carmen sweet peppers which now you guys see how the shade cloth is making a difference because this one is starting to flower again and then also these don't have any sunburn on them they don't have any sun scowl. these ones are starting to turn red they're going to be a little bit smaller than what they normally are during the winter but we are protecting them and saving them from burning up in the sun we also have some um, onion chives, or these ones are garlic chives right here. No, these ones are onions. Onion chives. And then we have our Marco sweet marconis, which are now starting to put off sweet marconis. And once again, these ones 
are not burning up in the sun. So they're not as big because it's not that time where they're gonna be nice and huge like the fall, but at least we are saving them. And guys, I almost forgot my curry tree. And look at this guys, it's growing little seeds in there. Little seeds are forming. So hopefully I'll have some seeds that I can share. Guys, and that is the end of my desert garden tour. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I am going back out to my favorite spot to sit before it gets too hot. <laughs> but if you guys like my video, make sure you comment, subscribe, and share. That does help out my channel a lot. A lot of people ask, how can I help my channel? That is the biggest way to share my videos and show people that we are able to garden here in the hot desert. It's possible. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.